After eight long years, the movie is now finally here. And to be honest, it's pretty much peak cinema. It was worth the wait in my opinion. I've seen it four times already at this at the time of this recording, and I wouldn't be surprised if the fifth time happened very soon. I know some people, including the critics, didn't like the film, and I genuinely do not understand why. Even removing all my love for the FNAF franchise, it's still really solid and has a lot of things going for it. Anyway, reviewing the movie is not what I'm here to discuss today. It's time for a theory. Okay! Now, I should mention before this that there will be spoilers for the movie, so if you haven't seen it yet for some unknown reason, go watch it. In this movie, contrary to the popular theory for the game lore, Michael Schmidt is not in fact Michael Afton, the son of William Afton, the purple guy too, the sequel, but not really evil this time. This may have been a surprise to some, disappointing to others, or completely expected to many because Mike Afton who? In the games and other media, there is lots of evidence to support that Mac Afton and Mike Schmidt are one in the same, and it's pretty much just become one of those unconfirmed facts of lore in the franchise that are just de facto truths at this point. However, in the movie, Mike Schmidt is his own character, completely unrelated to William, in any genetic way probably. And William doesn't even appear to have a son in the movie continuity. Well, what does this mean for the game canon? Does this mean that Mike Schmidt is just some random guy in the games too? Were we all wrong in making connections that don't actually connect? Are we just stupid dummies? Well, no, of course not. It's clear that the movie and game continuities are separated like with the book series. Just because it might be one way in one of the respective worlds does not mean they are exactly the same in the others. However, just like the books, I think the movie can give us clues to the game lore without having it be the same. They can give us parallels or references that can help us piece together other parts of the story. It's all part of the fun of figuring out the Five Nights at Freddy's lore, because nothing can be a straight give it to me answer. It always has to be this complicated, and to be honest, I wouldn't have it any other way. And I think that the movie confirms that Mike Schmidt is Mike Afton in the games. The movie gives us some clues and some very obvious parallels to the respective characters. I like to first start out with what I think is the weakest bit of evidence of this, the pill bottle. In the movie, Mike takes the sleeping pills to, you guessed it, sleep. However, it is also a clear reference to the pill bottles that you can sometimes see in FNAF 4. When you turn around and look at your bed, you can occasionally see some pill bottles on the nightstand. While they're probably not sleeping pills, the movie is definitely linking them together. When Mike wakes up at the beginning of the movie, they are, you guessed it, on his nightstand. In FNAF 4, you're probably maybe playing as Michael Afton, living through his literal living nightmare. And in the movie, Mike does a lot of nightmare living. The pill bottle is a solid link between the two characters. Moving on to a bit later in the movie, we see Mike Schmidt in Steve Raglan's office after having some occupational troubles. When Steve is going over his profile, he mentions Mike's name and pauses when he sees Schmidt. He then studies Mike's face, looking for familiarity. Michael Sh That's when he decided that Freddy's was the job for him. Now, what's really going on in the scene from the movie's plot perspective is that William recognizes the last name of Garrett and looks for a relation in Mike, realizing that this is the brother of someone he's murdered. However, I think that this scene also serves to throw us off. Scott is obviously aware of the theory that Mike Schmidt is Mike Afton, so he threw this in there to allude to that. We, as the FNAF fans, are supposed to see that and think that Mike might be his son. The movie keeps us guessing and forming conclusions until later in the movie when William confirms that this is in fact Michael Schmidt, not Afton. I just find it interesting that the movie keeps his last name ambiguous until the final confrontation with the Yellow Rabbit, when his last name is actually first said. It's, I know, it's crazy. It's not said earlier in the movie. This is the point when Schmidt is officially said. Now the most important bit, Michael Schmidt and Michael Afton have striking parallels. These cannot be ignored and are absolutely not coincidental. Well, let's get started, shall we? Let's take a look at Mike Schmidt. 
Schmidt is the eldest of three children. He has a younger brother and a younger sister. Unfortunately, Mike Schmidt loses his younger brother in a tragic way and he feels personally responsible for his death. The last words his mother spoke to him before Garrett was kidnapped were, I watch your brother, okay? Every night, Mike has dreams of his brother. He's tormented every night at the fact that his brother is gone and it is his fault. Later, he even has dreams that include images of other dead children, the ones from the missing children's incident, who represent the animatronics. By the time he's an adult, both of his parents are out of the picture and he's tasked with the responsibility of taking care of his younger sister. Now let's take a look at Michael Afton. Afton is the eldest of three children. He has a younger brother and a younger sister. Unfortunately, Mike Afton loses his brother in a tragic way and he feels personally responsible for his death. He was clearly in charge of taking care of his little brother. Every night he has dreams that remind him of his failures and constant guilt that he got his brother killed. He's tormented every night that his brother is gone and it is his fault. In his dreams, he even sees the animatronics that the children from the MCI would later possess. By the time he's an adult, both of his parents are out of the picture, and he's tasked with the responsibility of taking care of his younger sister by putting her back together. Sound familiar? It should. These two characters are parallels to each other. Mike Schmidt is Mike Afton for the movies, he's just not William's offspring. There are very few other differences. I guess Mike Schmidt doesn't lose his little sister, but her name, Abby, is literally an anagram of baby. These two could not be more linked. Mike Schmidt is literally just Mike Afton for the movies. I suppose that they didn't actually want to make Schmidt William's son for the movies because that would get a little complicated and I don't think it would have sat well with the general audience that isn't aware of the FNAF lore already. And I think it would have been really hard to implement in a good way anyway. I think that making Schmidt his own character was a good creative decision for the movie. However, us FNAF fans were meant to see the connections for Mike Afton and the game lore. I think that the movie confirms that Mike Schmidt and Afton are the same for the games while not having it in the movie. It's quite clever actually, and as the man behind the slaughter so beautifully put it, Symmetry, my friend! And that's why in Five Nights at Freddy's 2, the sequel, Mike Schmidt is going to marry Vanessa and take her last name, becoming Michael Afton, as he was always meant to be. So, what'd you guys think? This was kind of my first Five Nights at Freddy's theory video, well, public one, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments any connections that I may have missed, or tell me that I'm wrong, that there is absolutely no connection between these two characters, but you're gonna have to explain yourself pretty well because they are very clearly linked. Anyway, thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe, hit the like button if you enjoyed, and uh, I'll see you guys in another video.